Voy a cerrar los bajo la tierra tierra Nadie va a comer y de hambre morirá Madre quiero saber this look was pretty cute there's like no posting footage so sorry about that here's the instagram pic though kind of cute so i hope y'all enjoy the whisper get ready with me if you're new here go ahead and just subscribe give a like thank you all for joining me and let's get into it i already did my brows with the benefits poof proof and then the brow in 05 then I carved out the brow with shape tape I love using like a matte product so like shape tape or like the Fenty foundation around my brows so the products like don't bleed as I get oily through the day because I don't have eyebrows starting my eyes I used a couple cream concealers and then I'm starting to carve out my nose contour. I like doing this before shadow, just so there's kind of a base for the contour going already. And I don't have to worry about it looking disjointed. Later on, if I put shadow up to this point, and I'm using the Kevin Aquan Central Skin Enhancer. lightly shaded out my eye and the nose then I'll set it and I'm gonna go in with the Stila Vivid Sapphire I saw this picture of like Cindy Crawford with this like really frosty brow bone blue eye look so I wanted to recreate it <laughs> I'm just gonna press some powder with a dry beauty blender. Don't sleep on dry, I mean, that's not a beauty blender. Um, dry sponges outsold. I could probably clean mine, but they just press in powder so much better when they're dry. And since I have such hooded eyes, too much shimmer on here. I tried it yesterday, it just looks bad. Strobe sent me some stuff, so thanks, Strobe, very nice. Um, here's the Divinity palette, and I'm gonna take this, like, mid-tone, kind of brown. I didn't want anything too cool, because I'm back with eyeshadow, but for that 90s type of look, I like those, like, fleshy browns, so... <laughs> Like this was probably maybe a Kevin Aquan look. I just really am attached to like the sultry, diffused fleshiness of 90s glam. And I feel like the present day like trends with beauty are definitely just following that blueprint of like sculpted, but everything's way more perfected now. And just to deepen up the eye, I'm gonna mix the two of these. trying to smudge it out with a brush started to make it flake but I layered it like quite a bit and it looks pretty good now I'm gonna take some liner and smudge it then I'm gonna top this with my Pat McGrath shadow now that I'm entering the benefit brow search and I'm gunning for that price <laughs>
just tried to do my face pretty quick. I did like as I always do, except for I said I put like the brighter concealer here and then here so I can really pull my face. And then I set my like center of my face with the Kat Von D powder because that one really is like flashbacky. But I'm not mad at it. And then the outer perimeter, I took the Smashbox Halo powder in media. So pretty on the skin. And then also kind of took cashew, the loose powder from Fenty. I just dabbed it around my face. And then I did like a double wing type situation. And I cleaned it up with concealer because my under eye, it's just not flat. So when I smoke stuff out under there, I have to be careful with the way I place it because it just doesn't look like the most consistent. Dragon's coming up. Who's going? Let me know. I'm really excited for this year. Last year just went really good. And I'm going to go in with the Juvia's Place blush palette. My next one, I'm sure y'all seen it. It's like really fucked up. I wish like it didn't have the shimmers though. I'll probably start like with these two. I'll drag con. <laughs> Makeup Geek uh, bronzer. It's like a neutral color. Okay, people, I'm kind of, I've seen it once, but I'm so inspired after watching Us. I went in to watch it. I saw the trailers and everything, like right when they came out, and it's just like breathtaking. It was shot in Santa Cruz, which is crazy because I live very close to there. I grew up going to the boardwalk, so, and I know a lot of other films have been shot there, but this is an iconic moment for Jordan Peele. For that to be done in Santa Cruz is like, like, wow. And I'm so upset. I didn't know when it was happening. Like, come on. But yeah, when I first watched the movie, the whole time I was, it was just like, you're taken in by like, visually. It's really beautiful. And then the score takes you on a ride. I really like how, like, it felt very invigorating. Like, I will say, Winston Duke's character, I didn't think it was funny. Lupita was obviously amazing. And, and spoiler, spoiler, but the end, like, dance scene was just like, I don't know, there were these moments you're so like invigorated and her performance was just so intense. I'm just like, that Jordan put together this whole world, like, oh damn, like, wrote it, directed, produced it, that's just really cool. I've seen like all the cast interviews at this point, because I'm like, I want to know more and I like hearing what the cast's experience while filming was, but it was very much the cast reiterating, like, watch it and take what you will, decipher it yourself. So I got that it was, like, about trauma. I didn't really know the symbolism of Hands Across America. I didn't know about it at all, um, but now I understand, spoiler, about the U.S. and just privilege. I feel like there were a lot of plot holes that didn't really like allow the audience to really get that but it was definitely packed with like a lot of symbolism i don't know it's just so exciting and i want to see it again jordan peele what he's doing it's really cool oh my god yeah i kind of examined like i feel like for me when i connect the dots of of it being about privilege it almost like kind of flips the idea of like you know, you know, it, like the whole time you're rooting for the family and are above ground, not the tethered. And you think the tethered probably, you know, they're scary, this and that. But for all they've been put through, how can you say they're wrong for trying to fight for something better when the people on top who are already privileged just didn't pay any mind or have to pay any mind to the ways that the way they were living and impacted uh, the tethered's lives negatively. This country, it's just not a level playing field. 
but I really can't get over the last scene. I feel like from the start when Adelaide, spoiler, killed like and she did the grunting, like that was just a confirmation that she was actually the tethered. That last scene was just like, I can't, like that was beautiful. And I think, I don't know, like how do people get into film? Like that's so cool. I'm like, how do you become a director? Comment below. Santa Cruz has always been kind of gross, you know? Oh my god. I can't get over how iconic and like gorgeous the shots were of baby Adelaide with the candy apple and the thriller shirt and her pigtails. Like, like, wow. I loved us. <laughs> And for the lip, my favorite part, and a lot of people have been asking me about the lip combo I wear, which it's always this. I feel like I mastered my overlining and everything. The products I use, I use cork from MAC, and you'll see it in a second. I line, I smudge it out a bit. Pretty much the outer parts of my lip keep it pretty diffused, just because hardship all around just doesn't do it for me. like the fleshy plump fantasy I don't need such a hard lined lip um, the only parts I'll leave a little hard are like the tops and bottom which I use unveil from Fenty I really like this color I think it's like you know how people say like a nipple color for like nudes this is like that kind of color but it's just too liquidy and it kind of is sheer sometimes but it's a perfect color and lastly, I use the Deluxe Trance from Pat McGrath in La Beja, which at first, I don't know, I thought it was like too pink. I don't really gravitate towards like pinky like this. I normally think like peachy, which I also really love this color. It's like the perfect thing to brighten up a lip. The Patrick Star Peachy Peter, which I thought this was way too pale, but it's really beautiful for like a gradient lip. But this La Beja color is perfect because I like to do the brown to give like dimension and plump everything back up with like a nude, like a beige. And a lot of times I use lighter, brighter ones, like the Flash of Flesh from Miss Fame Beauty and then the Patrick one, but this is a perfect mid-tone, like very not too bold, not too pink, not too brown, but it's just enough. I definitely think combined with like these, it gives you like that 90 dimensional fleshy lip without it being super heavy or like that too pale nude. So that's what I use. <laughs> Hope you all enjoy my once every three month video. But yeah, let me know what you want to see next. I might post, I don't know. Thanks for checking out this video. Be sure to check me out on my other socials where I'm actually active. And I'll see you all next time.